All right, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. May the whole uh, is convened, and we got two items on the agenda. Uh, first up is the allocation of lodging tax funding for 2022, and then we'll have an update from the Rent Municipal Arts Commission. So I will turn it over to oh, Jesse. Okay, whoever. The Lodging Tax Advisory Committee began accepting applications for a second round of funding for the Lodging Tax Program for 2022. Let's let you do that. Uh, applications were due on May 13th. Ten applications were received, totaling $289,000 in requested funds. The committee heard presentations from qualified applicants on March 24 and reviewed their findings as a team to find their the committee recommends the approval of $85,000 in awards to support nine programs scheduled for 2022. The recommended recipients include Empowering, who will host a New Year's Eve celebration with the family focus intended to attract guests to stay in the renting venue with their families and will include free child care so parents can enjoy some time. Emerald Dynasty Entertainment will be hosting an evening of Activities, meet arts and crafts, and as the kickoff event to the two week all regional arts and music festival. The National Professional Women of Color Network will be working with their physical sponsor, the Seattle chapter of the National Black and Native Association, organizing a two day professional summit focusing on networking and sharing best practices between business organizations. The Black MBA Association is working as well with ML and Associates for Washington Black Owned Business Excellence to host the Juneteenth Memorial Ball in celebration of the state's declaration of independence at the Reading Learning College for the first time. The ball will be held at the Pavilion in the Pink Con Northwest is hosting King Con 2022, which is scheduled for October 28th through the 30th. Seattle Film Summit submitted a request for additional funding in the second round, additional film opportunities, and a premiere event at Rainbow Theaters in the land and has been added to the original scope of the tender grant. Cat Theater is hosting the 17th annual South Asian Film Festival, which includes live screening events in Renton as part of the two week festival in November. Northwest Music Association is hosting the Seattle Summer Music Games, which features a drum and bugle core competition and all three events at the Renton Stadium on <coughs> The BA is confident that the selected applicants and the proposed projects will serve to promote Renton both as a business and leisure destination and ultimately bring more people to the community. The remaining 2022 balance for available lodging tax funds is sufficient to cover the cost of the recommended funding package. Uh, um, <clears throat> thank you so much for the presentation. So I, my question is, we're always concerned about heads and beds. And I'm looking here and I see predicted room nights. Um, what happens if they don't meet their predicted room nights? Is that just the market against them if they come to it for future funding or? Yes, typically. So at the end of these are reimbursable grants, so they have to submit a report to the lodging tax advisors that does include the projected versus the actual number. So that is taken into consideration, especially for next year's outcomes. So if they are anticipating or hopeful to continue to receive lodging tax for additional grants, it is important that they are not closing for their room nights. And part of what the lodging tax advisors really appreciate is when they work closely with the home. So that's taken into account too. So if they say they are making promising so many heads and beds and don't reach out to hotels to do booking blocks, uh -huh. then that's a, a mark against them for future funding as opposed to if they did take the opportunity to reach out to all the hoteliers to set up the blocks to show that they took a concentrated effort to Just to follow up, if I may. So it's not people individually going to a hotel and, and telling somebody, I stayed here. It's them through this organization, through the sponsor saying, I need a hotel 
and they say, okay, we've got these blocks. And that's where there's discrepancies too in calculating the reports. Right. So the hope is that they'll capture the majority of the people who are staying at the hotel as a result of the event, but it is anticipated that there are people who will go to other hotels or go to Airbnbs to stay with relatives. So you're not going to capture people. I think I'm with that guy that goes to the Airbnb. I throw out the numbers for everyone. Sorry about that. Got <laughs> some guy. He's one. I kind of follow up on uh, this. So this is my first year actually kind of participating on the Health Act Committee. And to the point of working with hotelier, you know, there's <clears throat> even after the fact, okay, well, you know, they want to uh, be as accurate as possible for future asks. But it also is kind of telling when they're they're pumping this up, but then the hoteliers are saying, well, we haven't been, we haven't gotten any requests for room blocks, and those are things like in three weeks or something like that. So overall, you know, if from what I've seen, even outside of outside of it and now in it, there are there are grandiose claims, you know, projected. Sometimes you might want to uh, substitute that with hoped, and <laughs> dreamed, wished, or something like that, but. Um, in looking at some of the, the folks that were considered, uh, it, it, you kind of see, and there's some historical data as well of what they have captured, and uh, you know that kind of went into a lot of it. I see even some of the numbers there, but they, they projected that probably. And I, I think in some cases there might be some that will produce more, uh, simply from some of the logistics that they that they gave. But for, for the most part, it's not an exact thing, but. As far as capturing, I think it needs to be fairly accurate, at least going forward as to what it's just been in the uh, Ms. Rosa. Yep. And so not not to belabor this at all, but I'm looking at this and we have one that has an event that's gonna happen at the end of this week. I'm assuming they know they have the award and they are already working with the hotels. The awards are not granted until after the approval. Okay. But do they know that they are being? I'm just the 19th is <laughs> like that. Yeah, how do you so yeah. I'm trying to figure out what their expectation yeah, is. What their expectation is. Right. And yeah, they like, do know that they've applied uh, and they were they read the, the council event, so they do realize that they are being recommended to the company, so they were aware of that. Okay, that's so what I'm saying. trying to find out. So, so they are very helpful. Okay, because I, I am I am I am concerned about an event that's happening this week yeah. and then being able to get enough heads and beds mm -hmm. in enough time. That is my concern. Not that I think that, yeah, I just have a concern. If this had come to us a couple of weeks ago, I wouldn't have as much concern as I have right. coming to us now and the events, you know. Right. And if I may, and I, again, don't mean to blame this, but I'm still trying to catch up. Um, so, because we have no confirmation through like our local hotel that they've made any arrangements. Right. But that's the heads and beds, while it is priority to the Washington tax grantors, it is not necessary. So, the Washington tax is also allowed for events that encourage tourism to the city. So, that doesn't need to translate dollar for dollar into the heads and beds. The focus on generating room nights is that that is going to fill the yes. next year. Absolutely. But the lodging tax program itself is often used to just generate quality of life activities, events like Rent and Liberty, and Jazz, and just some fun things that bring in events that would not necessarily drive people to hotel, but encourage the creation of a, a rent and a theme through this event. These opportunities to mm -hmm. just a follow up on the same one. Go for it. No, yeah, I yeah, um, where the I'm missing, I missed it. Where does that being held? The pavilion, thank you. Yeah. Um uh council member Chris, to your concern that it doesn't mean that if they don't get it that the event's not happening. No, I'm not right. concerned about I mean, that. Yeah. I'm I so let me back up. For years there's been a concern if Prior councils, there were concerns about organizations getting the money and then not falling through on the heads and beds. And so, this just ring my alarm bell yeah. because that has been 
a typical concern of the councils when we've been dealing with LTAC mm -hmm. is that we've had events that have come and said, we're going to do X, Y, Z, and we're going to have this many people. And then afterwards, what they said doesn't match up to what happened. Mm -hmm. And so when you have an event that's happening this week, that was the only thing that made me go, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. If this happens, like, I can't buy like, Saturday or Sunday, um, but, you know, what's happening there. But that's all. So, no, I know, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm just concerned about And I also don't want to send a message that I understand tourism is important, but if we're going to replenish the funds, heads and beds are just as important to me so that we continue to have a thriving LTAC system. Mm -hmm. You want to comment on it? I, I wasn't, I, let me just attend to what I was saying as far as um, it, it, uh, it, speaking of the two team point, mm -hmm. um, they it, it will help defray their, you know, their expenses or whatever. I don't know if they had what the plan B was, but it was just a matter of, hey, do they, I, I don't know, just maybe you can. Sure. Address a little bit better, but I know there was something that that probably. Well, two comments on this one. Mm -hmm. There is a number of teams from celebration that are planning next week, mm -hmm. and part of their reasoning for holding their event on Sunday was to encourage people to stay in activities in Renton. So there are multiple events happening Saturday, and we're the only one scheduled for Sunday. So it's sort of a Extend the weekend if possible, especially for families and their own. While that was not their general motivation, not, a, not necessarily an answer, but you know, one thing to talk about. <laughs> the second is that this is a good case to comment on what you mentioned earlier is that this is an anomaly event. So, what was reiterated to them is that it's important that whatever you're approving now is going to apply to whatever potential future events may be. I'm sorry. Oh. Are we talking about the Grand Ball? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Which is sold out, by the way. Yes, I, I wanted to uh, ask. So that's the Grand Ball, that's inaugural event. But what about the New Year's party? Is it the first time or they've had this before? Okay, so it's the first time as well. And then I, I do have uh, a concern in terms of the makeup of committee members and then the grantees. Um, I worry that there is a potential for a conflict of interest um, in, in terms of, of funding. Um, so I wanted to ask Council Member Alberson, because uh, from the, the, the agenda bill, I believe um, Manka is a part of the uh, committee as well and also rece receiving grant. Is that correct? That is correct, but oh. why are you asking me? <laughs> I'm no. new on, I'm new oh, on that. No, I, you're, you're in the committee, so I just wanted to ask that. So oh, I, I think uh, Councilmember Prince wants to feel that one. That, that is not atypical for LTAC. We've had other people who have had their events get funded, and they've sat on LTAC before, and, and that goes back to forever. You know, like that Renton River Days got its money because they had a person that was on the outside. It doesn't, to me, devalue the event. But I, I can see where there could be seen as there being some conflict of interest, but it is something that's gone on for a long time. Council President? Yeah. May I follow up on what Kim just asked? What is the process or policy for, for that? Because that is a conflict of interest, not if. That is, it doesn't appear to be. That is a conflict of interest. I want that very clearly stated. Um, what is the process and policy for that conflict of interest? Does the person like step off and doesn't like review their own application? Correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so they are, uh, especially the Zoom meeting. Uh, it, is, it is typical, as Councilman Price said, that the members of the lodging tax have had their events on the because of the make of the required liability of the LTAC or the Metro Library. At least two seats on the committee or from groups representing groups that can be funded. So it's a requirement. Um, 
Oh, and, okay. And then I see Councilor Perez has her hand raised as well. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, if I remember correctly, one of the reasons, for example, that people like Maka is part in this lodging, lodging committee is because they have the experience because they have been minority applicants that have successful uh, know what is the process for the for the LTAC. So we wanted, well, I don't appoint them, but what I remember as council is that we wanted people that represent the community, but as well as people that have gone through the process so they understand the the hoops of and what is this this LTAC money. That's the reason why we have people that at the same time apply. And yes, while it may seem as a conflict of interest, I don't know, Councilmember Alberson, is if when it's time to vote, if an applicant that is part of the committee is presenting an application, they have to recruit themselves uh, for this vote or not. I don't know that, but... Um, or Jesse, I will address that question. But um, one of the reasons, again, well, we that they chose, I didn't chose anybody, that they chose to have people uh, in the committee that, uh, that, that actually apply for this kind of funding is because they have gone from the beginning to this process. But maybe I, I'm misunderstanding this, Jesse. Maybe you can clarify. Well said. Ms. Mary, did you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I can, I can add. I don't know if I missed what Jesse said earlier, but the, uh, the way the rules are, are set up, you have to have an equal number of people on the board that um, are taxed as an equal number of people that are um, available for the, the tax. So we usually have two or three representative from hotels, and then it's exactly the same amount from organizations <laughs> that are um, in a position to be able to receive the funds. So you might know the, the actual RC Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's so, what I was gonna add. So, so just to clarify, this is a, a an RCW. It's not a rent. It's RCW. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and typically, and I was on the LDAC for the last four or five years, and so typically the um, the board member who is up for receiving the funds usually recuses themselves, uh, and it's usually one time. Creedy was representing the city, and she would always recuse herself for any city event. Mm -hmm. so. I'm not sure who was next. I see Councilmember Vaughn has her hand raised, and okay, Councilmember Vaughn. Yeah, thank you for the clarification. Um, I guess the uh, the question I post back is, and, and you know, I know Council Member Prince mentioned that it's not devaluing the event. Certainly, that was not my point. My point is there is that uh, potential conflict of interest, and now that's clarified. Um, so my next question is, as far as the membership on the Altec board, is it a uh, just for the public to know? Is it two year, three year? Um, time process uh, and how one can be ap applying for the process and to be appointed or and then also how many applications did we receive this time around and what was the promotion or outreach of the application process. I don't have that at the tip of my tongue we can get you that information. So if, if I'm looking at the uh, attachment correctly it looks like 10 uh, that applied for this and this was the second round of funding. And you can see the breakdown of, of yeah, what was requested and then what was actually recommended to be funded. Yeah. And then the other part of the question was, I don't know the answer to as far as the. And then about the outreach. Yeah, so we did a um, press release and a lot of support from the Women's Community Marketing Campaign, the Community Chamber, uh, pushed out to businesses, we reached out to PAC applicants uh, and planners and hotel Networks and event groups, event planning. Uh, well, I think one of uh, Council Member Vaughn's question was, what is that? What is the outreach for getting board members? That's what I thought she was asking. Uh -huh.
I believe they're, I don't, I don't know the exact process. I think they are mayor appointed though. And I don't know the terms. What's the pool? It's okay. typically well, the pool or the hotel. I mean, it's been a yeah. struggle actually getting individuals to serve on that. It's one of the boards that are, are more difficult to find because it's a limited amount of people, right? You would have to get it from the hotel here and from people that are running events. So it's um, it's that small group that you have to pull from. I haven't ran. Now I have another question about the New Year's event. Okay. You said this is their first time throwing it in Renton. Two part question. How many times have they thrown this event before and what does their attendance look like for this event in the past? I don't recall these specific numbers. I recall they were they were impressive enough. They were success. It was a success. But she presented numbers. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, excellent. Okay, great. Now we have to look back and and let you know. I'm just just curious. Mm -hmm. Just curious what we're what we're going to see. Okay. Really appreciate the report. It's very nice. Yep. And and I want to say I actually really really enjoyed the presentation this time. It was nice to have those kind of high level numbers yeah. as far as predicting it. So I think this was as far as like the packaging of the best I've seen. So I appreciate that. Um, obviously, this is always we have always have questions on lodging tax every every year. So and they're good questions. So they're good to be asked. Um, I think we're at the point we probably want to make sure we move on to the arts commission unless there's any final thoughts on this. I do have a committee report uh, that I'll move tonight if there's no objection from anyone. Okay, I'm not seeing any, so I will go ahead and sign this and move it at the meeting today. Thank you. And so it, we'll move us on now to an update from the Arts Commission. Not seen the advanced sharing options before. I don't. That one's in Zoom. Oh, there's a box, a uh, check mark on the upper right of that box. It was like, all right, so or an X on, on that. I would just yeah. close it the top right. Boom. Okay. The Arts Commission presented the committee the whole in March with the initial round of awards for the 2022 Art Grants Program. And as that this meeting, the full council present their decisions for the second round of proposed team meeting. Here tonight is the Vice Chair of the Commission, Bill Holtz, to present an update from the Arts Commission. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. As you may remember, this is the first year that we have structured the program into a multi social cycle process with the in intent to be more transparent the grant process and more focused on our efforts to deliberate engage the council and the arts community as a whole in the planning and awareness we get involved in many varied efforts of artists and arts organizations in our city who are creating opportunities to engage and experience art right here at home the first round of 2022 grant program the Commission had the opportunity to offer seven awards to individuals, organizations, and community groups for arts, culture, projects, and events that serve the general public in Renton. Among those granted were Allied Arts of Renton for the 2022 Creative Kids Contest, which was inspired, which has inspired students from grades pre-K to 12 to enter their art into citywide competitions that will be put on display for community to enjoy. The deadline has been extended until the end of June, so please continue to help us support the Allied Arts in their promotion of this contest. Bail Dior received funding to support a dance program to provide scholarships to students who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford their lessons and participate in the upcoming Juneteenth celebration and recitals this Saturday. The students will be performing and we still rise at the event scheduled for Lake Avenue South and the BLM Street mural at 4 p.m. and at Campbell Hill Elementary at 2 p.m. on June 18th. 
These are just samples of programs and opportunities that the Commission has been able to fund with your support and back in the city's art program. The grant program is one of the most valuable functions that we on the Commission serve, and it's an honor to work so closely with the diverse communities of artists and arts organizations we have in Brent. The second round of grants programs closed Thursday, May 5th. We had 10 applicants that we received a totaling of 64,765 in requested funding. The Grants Committee, a subcommittee of the Commission, reviewed the applicants extensively and evaluated each proposal on the illustrated ability to demonstrate an alignment with the mission, the mission of the Arts Commission to enrich and increase participation and awareness of the cultural and arts community. Throughout, thoughtful consideration has also had to be given to the projects that most illustrated ability to be carried out as proposed. The total request for grants this year exceeded the arts and culture budget by more than $85,000, and the committee had to be selective in their use of the available grant funds. The committee made their funding recommendations to the full commission at the meeting on June 7th. The total proposal, proposals were approved for funding, a total commit of $23,545 in the second round of grant funding. Grant recipients include a photography exhibit by artist Anna Mia Davidson at the Renton History Museum, featuring image, images from Carpathian Mountain Village in Ukraine. A scholarship program to provide access to lessons at Ascendance, Pole, and Aerial Arts to students experiencing financial, financial hardship. A mural downtown on South 4th Street by artist Will Schlag entitled Forest Lights. I think I uh, did the snails that are downtown. Uh, an instructional video by instructor and mother of disabled daughter Cheryl D'Ambrosio, illustrating how to engage the disabled and senior communities in the creation of fine air painting. Found, found funding for the 2022 Puget Sound Property Festival, which will be held on August 27th at the IKEA Performing Arts Center with elements in the Piazza Park to bring the world of property, property crafts and performance to keep the community at large with low or no cost op options to attend and participate in the program. Support for the Rent and Rec Reflections Program hosted by the Rent PTA provides opportunities for recognition and access to the arts for students, K through 12, designed to boost student confidence and success, arts and life. The awards will be announced at the end of the week contracts that we execute with each of the grant recipients. We are so pleased to be able to support all the fabulous art programming available to our rent community and truly appreciate the council for your understanding and the critical role that art plays in providing for diverse and vital economy for the our city. Any questions or comments? Thoughts? I, I can just say that it's great to see the Arts Commission continuing all of this great work. I mean, I know that Michael, my husband, Michael, was on the Arts Commission for 17 plus years. And that goes back about 12 years uh, when he stopped that. But he was always so proud of being able to bring art projects in, into the city. And, and this is, it's just, thank you. Can only bang on that door so many years before it finally opens. <laughs> uh, and and the, the results, I mean, they make it so easy yes. to justify yes. too, as far yeah. as the outcomes go. I mean, yeah. what has there been able to be done um, on the shoestring budget? To, I mean, it's, it's been able, I mean, with the dollars given, it's, it's nothing short of incredible. So, yeah, I, I was on the Arts Commission back when we had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember those days. Yeah. Um, getting things done with the overall Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. You guys have more than justified the increased funding. Mm -hmm. okay. Any yeah. one question? Please. Um, we we all love Mr. Schlag. Um, and in the future, do we also outreach or do any outreach to like BIPOC artists for our street mural? Besides, yes. I know we know I know we have had tree in the past, but are there any like expansion or outreach in regards yeah, to that? We put out the outreach. We put it out to everybody. Okay. So. So, and then we go when they come in and apply, we go through. Mm -hmm. 
that's very important to us. Then. And the, and may I ask, does the Rent Arts Commission have any kind of um, racial equity component to their grant funding in terms, in, in that regard? Because, you know, we do understand art is still an equity issue, right? Especially, especially the racial component. So is there any racial equity in the process? They're making more concentrated efforts on the Final question is since we worked with Mr. Schwab a couple of times, is there a cap for how many like single artists can receive funding? Is so the proposal for that particular mural was again it proposed by Burnett Station. So they were the ones who chose the artist, right? They did so because they had seen his work very similarly. It's handled slightly different if it's a mural that the Arts Commission is okay. sponsoring, mm -hmm. and that would be one of the lists okay. to reach out to everybody. They intentionally went to an artist because of his connection. His okay. task work. Okay. Makes sense. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Councilor uh, Press, go ahead. Thank you. I just uh, want to appreciate again all the work for their commission um, and everybody uh, involved in this. But um, this time I really want to give kudos because I really received a lot of information uh, about the deadline of applicants. It, it, it was an extra effort to put it on social media, in all platforms, and even I received an email this time, and it was in the downtown renter partnership maybe, um, newsletter and the rent chamber of commerce, and it was very well um, a, a advertised um, that people should, uh, for people to apply the grant. And uh, one of the things that in the past we have been uh, concern is that how, how many people know about these grants and how to apply and how easy it is or make it easier for them to apply for the grants. And I see some of the past people that have struggled to apply for these grants uh, are now recipients of the grants. So that speaks volumes of the effort of the department as well as the committee. So thank you. Additional questions, comments? Thank you so much. Appreciate the presentation. Always. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And uh, with that, that's our final item on the agenda. We will go ahead and adjourn and we'll reconvene for our regular council meeting at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm reaching for the lead button. <laughs> <laughs>